So we've known in low-grade lymphomas that chemotherapy is very effective. In fact, chemotherapy with rituximab results in long remissions with most patients, especially in the frontline setting. In fact, if you look at several studies, uh, they've shown that chemotherapy plus rituximab results in progression-free survival at three years of around 80%. Unfortunately, chemotherapy is associated with well-known toxicities, many patients relapse, and many times with each subsequent line of therapy, remissions get shorter. So for many years, we've been trying to figure out ways to use novel therapy, potentially immunotherapy, different types of antibodies, and integrate that into first-line therapy for follicular lymphoma. One of the first efforts to try to do this in, in, a, in, a, in a big trial was the relevance trial. And in this trial, uh, we use two drugs, lenalidomide and rituximab. Lenalidomide is an immunomodulatory drug that has been shown to kind of augment the activity of rituximab or make rituximab work a little bit better, especially in follicular lymphoma. And we, we've seen this in some preclinical models. Uh, I wrote actually a, a phase two investigator-initiated trial several years ago that showed that this combination worked very, very well in untreated follicular lymphoma patients. So after that phase two trial, there was another trial that showed very similar outcomes, and we designed the trial that I presented today. And that's, again, a, a randomized study comparing this new non-chemo regimen against chemotherapy. Now the chemotherapy uh, could be CHOP, bendamustine, or CVP. The trial enrolled 1,000 patients, and they were randomized one-to-one, -one, basically to get chemotherapy with rituximab or this novel you know, immunomodulatory regimen, lenalidomide rituximab. And in the trial, um, which was conducted over, goodness, probably, I guess, seven or eight years now, um, we found that the remission rates were actually very similar. The overall remission rates were very similar between the two regimens. The complete remission rate at 120 weeks will also look similar, and the best complete remission rate was, was similar between the two regimens. But more importantly, we saw that the progression-free survival, which is the remission time, was almost identical whether they used immunotherapy or chemotherapy. So this, for the first time, showed us that you could use an immunotherapy-based regimen and get the same outcomes, both in remission rates and in times of remission, as chemotherapy. So I think this was really a kind of a landmark finding that uh, for once we could actually develop a regimen without chemo that mirrored the same results of chemotherapy. And as we would expect, when we moved away from chemotherapy towards an immunotherapy-based regimen, we didn't see the same level of certain side effects, meaning cytopenias, infections, neutropenia. Uh, with the lenalidomide arm, we did see higher rates of rash, which was expected as lenalidomide has been known to cause rash, and occasionally some tumor flare. But overall, both of the regimens were, were very well tolerated. So. I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, when we're thinking about how to treat patients with newly diagnosed follicular lymphoma, we now have another regimen that uh, really has efficacy or works very similarly as chemotherapy with regards to tumor control remission rates, but potentially without some of the side effects that we commonly encounter with chemotherapy.